fellow fellow warriors and welcome to fan seeing it today I have for you an interview with director steven shea uh, for his new movie surviving supercon welcome steven hey, glad you could so be much here for having me yeah yeah thank you um i gotta say uh i enjoyed your documentary i haven't been to a convention in uh, quite some time and uh you know i never really think about everything that goes into putting the convention together. So it was really fascinating to see like with this mom and pop organization with uh, Michael Broder and Sandy Martin and uh, their whole crew, uh, how they put this all together for this huge event. So uh, how did you come up with the idea to make this documentary? I actually got approached. I had known the Broders for some time and I had gone to the Supercon convention that they run quite a few years. And so they, we're coming to a point where they, I think actually the full story is there was a Hollywood movie made about their yeah. convention um, called Supercon. And yeah. it had a bunch of big actors in it and it cost millions of dollars. And they weren't as happy with how that turned out. They, they didn't have much part of it other than they just kind of built the movie around their, their show. So they right. wanted to kind of show their side of, of the story. And it was the 12th anniversary of the convention in Fort Lauderdale. And so they wanted someone to kind of come in and showcase what they had built over 12 years. And I had known them really well. And so they called me saying, Hey, we have this opportunity. Would you like to come down here? We'll get a crew together and we can come and document how the convention goes. And I never really had thought about it. I, I'm not really a documentarian. I'd only made re uh, regular movies by then, yeah. but um, I was like, sure, you know, this sounds like a lot of fun and I love conventions and I love behind the scenes stuff. And so we went down there and we had four camera teams and followed each person around the convention, uh, each of the heads for four days and chaos ensued. You know, we didn't, <laughs> it really is. It's a complete fly on the wall documentary. Like I did not set up anything. I did not make anybody say anything. Right. We didn't have to script anything. Like all the chaos that happens is completely natural and actually happened there. So that's kind of a, it's kind of interesting. We didn't have to make any drama. <laughs> for yeah, I mean, it is, you know, like I said, you don't really think about everything that goes on, like celebrities canceling things falling off the top of the thing and almost killing people, the security <laughs> system, people being untrained and all that. You don't really think about all that when, when you go to these uh, conventions and it was just like, Man, it was crazy to learn all this back, uh, you know, and I've never been to Supercon. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I've been to like Chicago and, you know, stuff like that. So it's just like, it was amazing to me to, uh, to see how it all began. And, uh, you know, it kind of interests me that he started as like a Superman convention mm -hmm. and nobody yeah. showed up, which Superman is yeah. my all time favorite superhero. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I've been dealing with that pretty much my whole life being a Superman fan, but it was, it was interesting. And like you said, just like the craziness that ensues and like, like with uh, the giraffe from Toys R Us, how it yeah. became an online sensation and it wasn't even their footage too. Cause they hold right. the awesome wrestling show there. So that was interesting. It's so yeah, just like, yeah, go ahead. There's a lot of, a lot of parts, <laughs> a lot yeah. of moving parts for sure. Yeah. And so like, like you said, you was just like a fly on the wall. So they just like approached you because of this uh, Supercon movie. And uh, so they want to tell their side of the story. So that was pretty interesting. So what was it? What was it like following everybody around and getting all this and doing all this? You know, it was it was exhausting. Uh, first off, because the convention, I mean, they kind of run 20 hour days. Yeah. Like the, the show itself isn't 20 hours, but, you know, they're there a couple hours before it starts and they're there couple hours after it ends and you're sleeping maybe three to four hours a night each night of the show um and we kind of divvied it up at the beginning we had four different camera teams so i followed sandy uh the co-owner and we had another person follow mike and we had another person that did b-roll and and then kind of yeah. a roaming camera but um i definitely i think i expected before we shot it that the situations would not be nearly as crazy as they were i was like oh a celebrity is going to have mustard on a sandwich instead of mayonnaise <laughs> and be upset but i mean this the other stuff that happened like yeah i never could have planned for and even I, I was lucky that one of our camera operators chris mcdaniel he is a reality show dp and so he mm -hmm. shot a ton of reality shows so he's like okay here's how we follow them here's how we shoot it like shoot it like this and the storylines will make sense which helped immensely for sure because the um, yeah. You're just literally running around with the camera and that weekend i mean we shot the entire movie in five days 
wow. we had a day of a day of interviews and then four days at the show. So it's probably like the shortest shoot, <laughs> like yeah, documentary shoot ever. But we had by the end of it, we had eight terabytes of footage and sixteen hours of interviews from it's everyone. Like- trial by fire right <laughs> just don't, just get in there and figure out how to do it <laughs> yeah and i mean i had been to tons of conventions you know in my yeah. lifetime and i love conventions and we've Me too, been man. to san diego comic-con a ton and all over the that's, place so that's one that's escaped me i still haven't got to make it out there <laughs> that one's that one's tough it's like an iron man competition yeah to survive that one that's a five-day show with like 170,000 people or something it's, it's nuts that one's pretty nuts the <laughs> super con was 60,000 people yeah over the course of the weekend and they they built that they built that huge you know <laughs> from yeah. a small mom and pop that's what i liked about it it was like this like you don't think of like I, I keep coming back to like you just don't think about what goes on and just to know that it's like it's like a handful of people well maybe a little more than a handful of people but like how you said the 20 hour days and just like and how they like they start playing in the next convention after the convention ends so they literally like work year round it's it's just it's craziness. It's like, like they said, obsession, not passion. Yeah. <laughs> like Sandy said, yes. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And yeah. it's, and they have a lot of diehard staff. You know, there's like a, there was like a dozen people in the office and, and then the two of them. And I mean, they had a few hundred volunteers that come out and they're like, Hey, we'll give you a badge if you come and volunteer for a day. But <laughs> you know, that gets a little hard yeah. as well because you have a few hundred untrained people that are kind of helping yeah, out. But exactly. So it's, um, yeah, it stayed interesting for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you enjoy all the pizza? Because I noticed they said you, the, all that pizza that you guys showed, and they like they just get tired of eating it. So I was it's, just, <laughs> I love pizza. I mean, who doesn't love? Pizza? Yeah, I mean, who does it? But like, yeah, they they have a <laughs> like for all the volunteers, they have a free pizza drop. So it's like they, they feed you in pizza. I think the idea is that as a volunteer, you're not working twenty hour days. But there's so there's always pizza around. So you go into a right. room and there's 20 pizza boxes stacked up that might have been delivered an hour ago. But you're so hungry because you're running around crazy that you're just like, whatever, just give me something to survive with. <laughs> um, and then there's a celebrity green room, of course, that has all the like really nice and fancier foods, mm. which you would you would sneak into now and then and just like grab a sandwich <laughs> or sneak, sneak something out, you know, before get William Jack. <laughs> <laughs> um, My sandwich is missing. <laughs> yeah. No, he's he's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but, I know he's a great guy. He is uh, like that, like you mentioned in that too. Like Michael Broder says, they give him crap shatner but he's actually a really really great guy and he really is yeah. you know he really is. He is so yeah but it was interesting so how was it like you know trying to wrangle around all the celebrities and the wrestling and the convention goers and like they have yeah. all the shops set up you know where people can buy so how was it like just navigating through all that with the camera and everything sure we i mean we were very lucky first off um, and we figured it out pretty quick on what would be the easiest way to shoot it. And so each of us would try to follow one point. And then we, the, with the four camera operators, we would always be in communication. So someone might radio over, oh, hey, this thing just happened. Get another camera down here. Or this is going on. Or, or we knew all the big events, like the wrestling every night would happen, the cosplay competitions, like the big stuff. Yeah. But then there was like, like someone got you know, injured. And we, well, we really lucked out with that whole sequence with the, the plate glass window. Falling yeah, when because it we just happened to be standing next to them when that happened, which was totally random, but there was another situation. Like there's a scene where the, uh, the fire alarm went off and our cameras were everywhere. So I was upstairs shooting the evacuations while another camera operator was down following Josh that was dealing with it on the dealer's floor. And so we luckily just had enough people there to be able to capture almost everything. I'm sure there's stuff that we missed that also happened. Um, (laughs) You never know, man. I had over an hour. I could make a whole documentary on just the parking fiascos (laughs) at that show. I had over an hour and a half of parking footage. Just there was just so many problems. (laughs) (laughs) It's crazy. Um, And then like the stuff with the security guards too is like how they like don't know. She Sandy had to train them on everything, and it was like uh. It was like it was. Well, I can't remember. It was like a new security thing that they provided unto them because they couldn't use the ones they always use or whatever. So that was that. I mean, that had to be wild, just trying to get all that wrangled with the camera and everything. Oh, and I mean, we were kind of standing there just as in shock as everybody else when all these scenarios are happening, and it's like, how did this happen? And, and luckily, everything worked out and everything was okay. But 
yeah, I mean, stuff like that, security is really important, especially, yeah. you know, in a community that was, you know, just a couple of miles from Parkland where they had the, the massacre there and everything. So it's like, you got to be really cautious about all of that stuff. And it was, a, that was a big shock. I think that yeah, it was probably the biggest shock of the weekend was the whole security fiasco yeah. for sure. I mean, it, it made for a great documentary, of, you know, even though it's a fortunate event, you know, it did. Cause it was, yeah. it was interesting. And, uh, um, I don't know how much you want to give away here, huh. <laughs> you know, because uh, I don't want to. I was just saying, it. yeah. Do you want to have any spoilers or anything? I mean, we can. I, I, I guess I, depends on what it is. Are you talking about was, the ending, like what happened? Yeah, a little bit ending? about the ending, a little bit, because you know, kind of surprised me and how, like we you talk about when we talk about it's a mama pop organization, and then it was sold yeah. <laughs> and to a corporation and now, but, the, but they're doing galaxy con now. So like, they're still at they it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I just didn't yeah. know if you wanted to cover that or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the Broders knew that this would probably be the last convention that they ran there because they had interest from Reed pop, which is the biggest convention owner on the planet. They own New York city comic con and San Diego and C2E2 yeah. and like all kinds of really big shows. And so they had been approached by them to, to purchase the show. So they kind of knew this would be probably the last show for them. Yeah. Um, that deal ended up going through about almost 10 months later after we shot, we shot the 2018 show. Mm. So that deal went through, I think in spring of 2019. Uh, and then from that, they started building galaxy con, which is their new convention brand at different cities around the country, which of course COVID has, yeah, has caused a lot of issues with, and now it's online, <laughs> yeah. which is doing really well too. You can now anybody can attend it virtually from yeah. anywhere in the country, which is neat. But yeah, yeah it's it's hard to it's keep. It's still something about you know being at the center and everything. But I get it. You know, oh, it's yeah. fully understandable. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, they had it was interesting for them to be able to get kind of those big leagues, you know, after building it up from nothing uh, to yeah. be able to get to that level and then expand to to more shows around the country. Um, and yeah, so it was, a, it was a cool experience for them, I think, to be able to do that. And now they have the movie to showcase what they did. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, like a legacy. It leaves out their legacy yeah. of how it came to be. And so when you're like at Supercon and you're enjoying it, just remember, you know, Michael Broder, Sandy Martin and all them there, they built that, they built that. So you can have that fun, that great mm -hmm. time there, you know, and uh, do they still like do all the wrestling and everything still there with all that now? They yeah, GalaxyCon ha has that. And SuperCon still has it, too. Uh, they kept that in Miami. Um, I mean... Because Reed Pop's running the shows now. But, yeah, they yeah. still have the wrestling and everything. That was uh, that was kind of interesting because I didn't know, you know, like I like I said, I've been to conventions, but not, nothing like as big as, like, SuperCon or San Diego Comic-Con. So uh, I, I found that kind of interesting that they did, like, wrestling with, like, uh, characters that you read about or see in movies and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like Skeletor and you guys had actual, um, oh, Oppenheimer. Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh, Alan Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah. Alan Oppenheimer as Skeletor there uh, that night. So what was that like to film? I mean, I was a big fan. So like, I yeah. was excited about that. And, um, and luckily things like that, that they would tip us off and say, Hey, we're going to try to do this. You might want to get a camera on it. So luckily for that scene, we had multiple cameras set up knowing that that was going to happen. Um, and similar with the, the Jeffrey scene too, like we kind of knew that something was going to happen. So we yeah. captured it a little bit better. We didn't know it was going to go viral and explode, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that was, it, it's, I mean, I'm a, I'm a total geek kid too. So I was excited yeah. about, you know, the celebrities and about running around with different things. And, um, but Alan, Oppen, yeah, that was such a fun sequence and he was having so, so much fun and the fans were, you know, having a blast. And so it was such a great moment. And, it really kind of showcases like these conventions are really important. Um, yeah. And we kind of hope that people watch the movie and, and realize that that conventions are a lot more than just, hey, here's some anime kids dressing up in costumes, buying comic books. Like it's not just about that. It's about being included and finding your tribe and meeting yeah. friends and building that community. Yeah, there's so many, you know, we we all have very different tastes and different beliefs and, you know, we may like something yeah. and then some of us may not like other things. Uh, but, you know, I always thought uh, conventions, it was, a, you know, like the place where everybody 
you know, it's like when you you just go and you hang out with your friends, you, even if you don't say if you don't like the new Star Wars and other people do like, you know, you, you still find people there that you can talk to, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like when we can all actually come together, even even if we don't believe or agree on the same stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm it's just like a huge nerd myself, you know. I will, uh, you know, Superman and horror and all that. And it's just so fun just to, to geek out about the stuff like that. And that's one of the reasons why, like I do my channel here, mm -hmm. you know, is like, I just, it, I get to talk to people like you who film stuff like this and it, it's really fun and entertaining and interesting, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I love your evil dead poster. Thank you. Know? you. <laughs> that, I, that's like the one thing I get complimented on every time I have somebody on here, they're like, Oh, I love your evil dead poster. I was like, I'm glad I put it there. <laughs> nice. I have, yeah, yeah. I have one in my office over there. I have one. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It's like, I remember, I still remember seeing that movie for the first time. It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> of course I saw army of darkness first though, which right. is weird. Cause like I saw it that first. And then later on, I knew I found out about the other two and I was like, Oh, what? There's more. I can watch Ash <laughs> kick butt everywhere. You know, I, I I think I'm on the same boat. I'm pretty sure I did see Army of Darkness first and then went in reverse. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was like. Them. You're not in the minority here because I've talked to quite right. a few people in here where we've all tend to have seen Army of Darkness first. So right. uh, it's some, there's something about that movie. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I got good. to meet Bruce Campbell at a convention. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I've been, I have, he's one person I would absolutely love to meet. He's like one yeah. of my all time favorite actors. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to think about where to go here because uh, sure. I think we covered a lot. <laughs> we covered a lot of it really quick. <laughs> Sorry, I was so concise. <laughs> but, hey, that's fine. I mean, it's good. Uh, but like, do you have any plans uh, to maybe you know like, follow up or something? You know, we had talked about. I think if anything, we had talked about shopping a series around because, mm -hmm. like, some of like Galaxy Con had had four to five cities. And it might be interesting to follow a convention around to multiple locations and be like, here's like we had a after I did the movie, I started doing some more video work with GalaxyCon and running some of their video teams. And it'd be neat because you would do a show in Raleigh, North Carolina, and then you would do a show in Minneapolis where it's snowing outside and there's like snow everywhere. And it's like, oh, and then you got more different problems for those yeah. conventions than you do for other conventions. And so the whole idea, I think, is interesting to explore to possibly build like a series, like a re some kind of reality series off of it to showcase that. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm not I'm not sure as far as like sequels or anything because this we lucked out too with a documentary having an ending. I mean, it has a really yeah. solid ending with the sale of the show, and so it kind of That's wraps true. up really nicely. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's still going to be conventions, and there's still be more stuff to more stories to tell of them for sure. Yeah, <laughs> more more stuff to more trouble, more excitement, more right. accidents, <laughs> right? And unfortunate um, events. But fine. yeah, it was. I mean, it was like I said. I keep I keep coming back to this because it really does just like you really don't think about when you go there, you know, you go there, you're like, I'm gonna see this person, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna do this, and and then you're like maybe you find out somebody cancels it. So you get mad, but you don't think about all that. That's still like, you know, what, what they have to deal with when a celebrity cancels or when they run out of merchandise or when like the mm -hmm. wind, uh, uh, what was it that came in and everything just fell in the store in the, uh, where they're selling everything. Like the posters fell. Oh, and all yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, smoking in the bathroom causes yeah, a major the, disaster somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like, you don't really think about all that. I mean, I guess that's not your, because you're there to have fun but you know next time when you see this documentary next time you think about it when you're at a big show think about everything that these people go through you know right. to set it up for you so that's cool. and especially their operation because it's so small so like they're literally mike and sandy are literally running around fixing these problems as opposed to a staff of you know 100 people that all have right. different training and so it's uh it was definitely interesting to kind of showcase that. And I like how at the beginning, everybody's really upbeat. And then by the fourth day, they're barely awake, like <laughs> zombies wandering yeah. around, you know, trying to yeah, make sure everything goes. And they had like Mike and that, uh, they were just sleeping on the floor back yeah. in the office, <laughs> like on day three or room. something like that. Yeah. It was like crazy at like two in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you definitely, you definitely have more energy drink than blood in your body at that point. I think by the fourth day, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. 
I mean, what was it like for you? I mean, you were following them. You're in your, you're in your crew was following their crew. Oh, so I mean, what was it like staying up that late and all that? Well, and you're carrying gear. So yeah. you're so exhausted just from like, and then you're trying to figure out storylines. So something will happen and I'll write down notes like, okay, this happened today. Let's build this storyline out. And then you have a, you have a B-roll shooter towards like, make sure you get enough B-roll of this that we're going to probably need some for later. And cause you're still, even though we're running around nonstop, you still have to build a cohesive story yeah. for the movie. So you're kind of always thinking about that to make sure in the back of your mind, like, all right, well, I want to make sure I have enough footage to make everything happen. Uh, and the one big thing I did do was we interviewed everyone on the staff before the show, except for Mike. And we interviewed Mike after the show. So then he could walk us through some of the sequences that had happened mm -hmm. that weekend. And some of them he didn't even know about because he was busy doing something else. <laughs> but that kind of helped us out too, to give kind of those two different angles of it. That's interesting. I mean, that's, that was pretty smart. I mean, considering he's at the forefront of everything, you know, he's the, he's the boss, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And I think it just kind of worked out that way. I think we just ran out of time. And so we, we just had to schedule <laughs> his interview like a day later, you know, a couple of days later. You guys we just put, didn't have time to do it. You guys put together a pretty good documentary. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I, I kind of like documentaries like this, you know, it just, mm -hmm. uh, the nerd culture and stuff, because, you know, it's just fun to learn and uh, geek out sometimes. <laughs> You know? Well, I think a lot of people that don't understand what these shows are or why they're important. I think that's a big, a big key too. like my mother came and saw it. At a, we had a family and friends screening and she's never been to a comic con. She has no idea what a comic con yeah. is. But by the end of it, she's like, that is so interesting. Like, well, I had no idea any of this stuff happens. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty important. I know. I mean, after I watched it, I was like, I, I, I want to go back to a convention, right. you know, I was like, I want to go, I want to go hang out and I want to, you know, just have fun. And it's just like, cause it's been so long. And, uh, yep. to, you know, to be honest with you, a lot of stuff in the world of geekdom and my, with what I'm into, it just, I'm just not as much into that anymore. It just doesn't seem, it doesn't have that feel it once had, you know what I mean? Sure. And, but I mean, I still have like, the, I still have my evil dad. I still have my classic Superman and all that, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's, it is what it is, but it like you, but like I said, I mean, just to go there and to be in the presence of all that and just, man, that, that had to be so much fun. It just had to be, I mean, yeah. exa exhausting and tiring as it must've been. It had to be so much fun. It was, um, it was, it was a lot of fun and conventions are a lot of fun. I mean, you're supposed to be fun. They're not yeah. supposed to be terrible. So it's, and especially that one, there's so many tracks. I mean, so many different things to do. It's so many different times. It's really incredible how much content they would cram into that weekend for sure. I know. I mean, like, like, like you said, there's like the, the cosplay show, the wrestling, the, um, the grounds where you can go and do this and do that. And it's just, just like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like you it's, have a little kids coloring center and then you have a, a late night hentai coloring center you know <laughs> for, for everybody <laughs> it's, yeah and, and it's like mike mike even said like uh with the um muppets where mm -hmm. like you have this person here and this person here and it just all comes together whether they are the same person or not or they believe different things it just all sort of like comes together to, and like and like there's that one moment they talk about where everything just seems to be you know, perfect at that, yep. at that time. So yep. did you, did you experience that moment? Uh, no, I don't, <laughs> I kinda, it was funny. Cause we talked about that after the fact, like, I wish I had a video of that moment happening, but we never either. We weren't there when it happened or we never caught a break quick enough to like have that moment. Yeah. Um, but we, I feel like we get that moment with the people at the show. You know, seeing everyone having fun and enjoying themselves and laughing and smiling and dancing and everything. Those are the moments that that really make it all worthwhile. Um, and I've had some pretty defining moments at some of these shows, like seeing just these kids to come together and and really kind of find their tribe. It's it's yeah. really magical and beautiful for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's 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 like the best part mm -hmm. truly is the best part of like going to a convention that's like like i said I, I don't mean to keep harping on that but he's like we all are different we all think differently oh, yeah. believe differently and then you go to these things and you like you got the anime people the star wars mm -hmm. people the horror people the comic book people and it's just like there's just all together 
yeah. whether they like it or like the same thing or not. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's like, a, just talking about it, like, I have, like I said, I haven't been to a convention in so long. I'm just, I'm like itching to go now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go, go back out, you know? Oh yeah. I'm even like the celebrities, you have like a William Shatner and some, and a lot of people are there to see him because of Star Trek. But then there were some yeah. TJ Hooker fans that were like, I want to get my TJ yeah. Hooker thing signed. And then you have some people that knew him for more modern stuff. And it was like, oh, was, he was in Miss Congeniality. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I guess it's true. I didn't bring yeah. that Miss Congeniality poster. But it's, I mean, yeah, they connect on totally different wavelengths. And the professional wrestlers connect with different people than the voice actors. And the, there's stuff like Mike always says, like, there's something for you and your dad and your grandpa. Like, they're all going to have something yeah. to see at the show. That they're going to connect with um different like i always love they always have the creature from the black lagoon rico browning love that. um love which that. that's why i got over oh, i got this poster signed by him at a, that's awesome at a i love the universal monsters they're like one of my yeah. all-time favorites so that's so, so cool like that's a like everybody knows who that is you know it's, yeah it's a classic classic person so it's 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 cool like it's it, there's definitely something for everyone absolutely definitely it's, it's just it's fun time all to be had <laughs> yeah much like your documentary you know so uh That's and like i will put a i will put like in the description uh mm -hmm. where they can purchase it so we're we're you awesome. know like itunes amazon all that yeah. right that's sure that's all gonna be sold. and i can send you the links or, or anything yeah 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 you just send me the links and when i i'll put them in the description here awesome. <laughs> for everybody to click on and do go do go see it guys check it out and you know it's really good especially if you're into like like what we've been talking about, just like the, the geek nerd culture stuff. Uh, I think th there can be something in that for everybody, no matter what you think or believe, you know? Oh yeah. That's the hope. That's the hope is really showcasing how, the, why it's important, why these shows are important. Yeah. Cause it's like, I said, like I said, I'm, I'm, I may be a little more jaded in my older age <laughs> of like some of the newer stuff that's out there, you know? Um, yep. But you know, it's still fun just to go and hang just fun yeah. to go and hang and uh just like you said give me like the, the creature for the black lagoon yeah. i mean that's that's awesome yep. I and mean, william shatner and uh you know it's just crazy Something for everybody for sure yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean like um, how did you get into uh directing you know i was very lucky i found my passion very early uh at 16 i kind of knew what i wanted to do and figured it out i mean i was i was in high school when dvds came out and so you would suddenly get these special features that you would never get on VHS tapes. And they would show you all the behind the scenes and different stuff to kind of see how they're making these things. And so I got in, I grew up in the Florida Keys uh, on an island down there. And so there was very little uh, to do uh, mm -hmm. in the industry, but I got a job at a local TV station and started doing television and commercial switching, live cameras and whatnot. And then eventually went to college in central Florida and, and started making low budget horror movies which is all i ever want to do <laughs> well, i can't blame you there man i'm huge yep. in the like 80s horror and stuff like low budget Same. cheesy yeah that's very, like very that's some of my favorite stuff man i'm like and i'm a huge huge physical media collector like you talk about yep. dvds and like over here it's wall yep. to wall blu-rays dvds vhs's 4k <laughs> nice <laughs> you know and yep. i you know i do a show on my channel called the physical media show where we showcase mm -hmm you know, uh, our physical media and stuff. And it's just, it's so much fun. Like you said, I mean, that's sort of what led me to my YouTube channel is like seeing all these special features and stuff. And then like finding people online that uh, share the same interests and in YouTube. And then it's just like, I could do that. I can share my, you know, my stuff. Yeah. So, and it's led me to some good stuff, some cool things, you know, oh, yeah. you, you know, you and your documentary, the, uh, in search of darkness documentaries mm -hmm. and so many cool people I've met just, and just geeked out and have fun with myself. So, yeah. <laughs> and we're excited because this, this doc will come out on Blu-ray and DVD as well. Oh yes. So that's why so many collectors and everything. It's like, it's important. Yes. Yes, because um, I, not for nuts. I don't don't get me wrong on digital, because I mean, it, digital streaming is fun. It's good, but I like to have that. I like yeah. to have that copy. And Same. so, if I want to go to my shelf and be like, I'm watching this. Right. <laughs> you know? And we were yeah. lucky. We had our poster art designed by Joe Simcoe, who's the current number one garbage pail kids artist at Tops. That's cool, because I noticed that might kind of look like a garbage pail kid in, in, in the front does, there. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was curious if that was kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, I've, I've met Joe a while back and uh, I was always a big fan of his work with Misfits and Guar. He did a bunch of their artwork and 
So we were lucky to get him because Tops now is like crazy with Garbage Pail Kids. There's so much. There's like a new card a day, I think, at this point. <laughs> it's like so much Garbage Pail Kids. But we <laughs> there's, were lucky to get him uh, to do it. That's cool. That was cool. And it is a nice little poster, which yeah. will probably be used in the thumbnail for either this or my review. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, like it's so cool though that you're in the physical media and low budget horror because like yeah. that's just like that's my jam. I mean, Superman, Me <laughs> low budget horror, <laughs> all that stuff. I mean, it's just yep. that's cool. And uh, so that's let's see, it's <laughs> That's the passion, you know, like so many people like, oh, physical media is dead. No, it's not. It's really not. There's so much of out there like this and it can lead to like creating a documentary called yep. Surviving Supercon. So that's how you got in yep. directing can lead to starting a yep. YouTube channel to where you can talk to the director of, you know, something you've watched. Yep. That was really cool. For sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I appreciate you uh, coming on here and talking yeah, to me. Yeah, of course. You yeah, know. thanks so much for having me. And you can come back anytime you want. Anytime you just want to awesome. like geek out or anything, or if like, uh, like I said, I do a show on Wednesday nights called the Physical Media Show, where we show mm -hmm. off a physical media. If you ever want to come on and do that show with me, and my buddy nice. uh, Tom, uh, you can come on and showcase. We like we pick like three or four picks, mm -hmm. sometimes five if we need some time, and we just you know we like show it and talk nice. about it. So if you ever want That's to come cool. on and do any of that, you're more than welcome. Awesome. I appreciate <laughs> that. And ho hopefully yeah. next time I'll come back with an indie horror movie. <laughs> no, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. I'd, I'd love That's to talk hope. to you about that. That's the so, I mean, like, what do you got down the pipe? Is that what you're right. looking to do? Um, I would love to. I mean, that's definitely where my, where my love lies is indie horror, but, uh, we, I'm shopping around a bunch of different projects. I ended up focusing a lot on animation during the lockdown and, mm -hmm. That was uh, because you couldn't leave your house, especially here in Los Angeles. You couldn't mm. do anything and production shut down. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to teach myself animation to try to learn a new angle to where nobody has to leave their yeah. house. And so I did a few animation projects and I, I own a multimedia company called Abysmal Entertainment, mm -hmm. which celebrates 20 years next year, which is exciting. That's and, cool. um, and so we kind of expanded that animation arm. We did a bunch of different animated projects and, and just did a, our first fan film actually this summer. We did an animated Ghostbusters fan film, oh. which uh, has been doing pretty good for that. That's pretty and, cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's the that's out now. There is the next project that's coming out that I was involved with, uh, which they technically just announced it today, so I'm allowed to talk about it. Is yeah. I got to write the new Ghostbusters Afterlife AR video game. Oh, that's cool. That's coming out. That'll be out on November 19th. That's cool. Have you seen um, the new Ghostbusters Afterlife? I might have. Oh, uh, and no spoilers, uh, no spoilers, but I got to ask, it is, was it good? It's fantastic. Like oh. it's, I loved it. Like, I absolutely loved it. And I think it's going to make a lot of people very happy. It's a very beautiful, touching, good movie. And it's a Ghostbusters movie. So oh, that's no, cool. I think it's, I think it's awesome. That's cool. For sure. That's cool. Because I'm looking forward to it because, you know, I'm not for nothing. That last one didn't do it. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, like, sort yep. of stepping back into – the world of Egon and Ray and yeah. uh, you know Finkman. So I'm looking forward to. I mean, even, I'm just yeah. I'm hoping. And I've like I've heard a lot of really good things. Like you, you know, people have said it's really good. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> and that's cool that you yeah. get to write for the game. So yeah, it was very exciting, super yeah. exciting to be able to do that's that. Cool. Cause I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan for sure. Yeah, yeah same here, man. Same. Here. I, I just bought them on 4K, part one and two on 4K. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah I, I finally upgraded and all I just like I would have if, oh, if I could get it. I just found an original Ghostbusters VHS. Oh nice. Uh, at a yard sale. It's and it's in like great, great condition. And I paid I wish like I still had mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's I, I've been like collecting, I don't know what it is. I was like nostalgia or something and yeah. I just kind of got back into the world of VHS. I've been buying tons of them, like trying to oh, find man. the really good like eighties and yeah. uh, nineties sci-fi and horror and just like, Oh man. But I found that. And I was just like, I like geeked out, I geeked out oh, all over it, you know, it's like funny. it's an original. About 12 years ago, I had, I used to run a video store. I ran a blockbuster video and then I ran a, this is pretty long time ago, but then I ran other independent video store and I had, I think it was 12 years ago. I had a collection of about 1200 horror VHS. Wow. And it was beautiful, but man, it just took up so much space. And yeah. then we moved out to California and I was just like, you know what? I'm, what am I ever going to do with this massive collection? So I found a collector and actually sold it to him, which That's was cool. cool. Yeah. And so it kept at least, it kept it together. And, 
course, now I'm like, well, maybe I should have kept some of it. <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of kicking yourself, but um, but yeah, it's yeah. uh, I I love those video store days and like having those uh, VHSs. That's so like my, that's like one of my top things. I like I've seen people do it, and I I want to build like a VHS video store mm -hmm. and, and, you know to the house like i've seen so many people that's like one of my dreams and oh, yeah. uh, you know it's, uh, and like the 80s horror movies are like really really hard to find and yeah. when you do find them people want a lot of money for those sure so, yeah so it's we're cool. lucky I, out here we have the the slashback video which is a in a horror video store that opens up usually once a year they do like a pop-up for three months and it's just like an art installation. You can't actually rent from it, but you can go in and just, it's like you're in a video store and everything's only from the original. Like I, I let them borrow one time. I have the original Child's Play 2 cardboard stand-up oh, with the giant cool. Chucky, like brand new with the scissors. Yeah, the scissors and the um, jack-in-the-box. <laughs> yeah. And so I let them borrow that for one of the shows. And um, it's just such a fun feeling to go back and just look around. We still yeah. have, I think our... Uh, our Alamo Draft House has a video store here that you can go into, but but yeah, video stores are kind of. It's a shame yeah. that they're all digital now, you know. Or red no, no, box. That's, <laughs> see, I do like that's like one of my passions. Like I do a lot of like video store stuff here on my channel. Like mm -hmm. I did a thing. I just recently did a video on the history of the video rental store. So oh, nice. Yeah, so that was pretty cool, and uh, and I still have my Blockbuster card. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, I still have it. Yep. So I love it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's cool though. Yeah, it's just it's just something that like like you said. I know it takes up a lot of room the VHSs, but it's just something about purchasing them again. Yeah, and it's like rebuilding that collection. Oh man, it's just fun. It's fun. Yeah, and but when you're also buying 4Ks <laughs> and Blu-rays, it kind of you're kind of like. Okay, I'll have to pass yeah. on the VHS this week because I really want this one. <laughs> it's funny to go back and watch a VHS. Like I still have a VCR that we use basically for digitizing things at this point. But yeah. it's funny to go back and watch it and be like, oh, wow, this quality is not yeah. <laughs> like not up to par. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's the quality. But I don't know, man. It's just sometimes you when you're watching that, you get lost in it. Right. But yeah, no, the quality. Sure. Yeah, like you said, the quality was not the best on VHS tapes. <laughs> So you kind of forget, it's like, well, yeah, this is before HD, and then before yeah. 4K, and <laughs> before Blu-ray is like, <laughs> yeah, it's, but, but it's still nostalgic yeah. for sure. Look, they have a lot of 35 millimeter screenings here. We can go back and watch. I got to watch Evil Dead on 35 millimeter, and that that's was cool. Quite an experience that's cool. for sure. Yeah, that is cool. Um, but yeah, thank you, man. Like I said, anytime you want to come back on my channel, time you want to talk in your in future indie horror project, or if you want to come share some of your like physical media on my show, because I'm something you know, I'm all about that. So you're welcome sure. back anytime. Oh, and, thank you so uh, much. Yeah, and uh, everybody out there that's watching, please check out Surviving Supercon. I will have, like I said earlier, I will have the links in the description for you guys. Awesome. It's a really good documentary. Uh, you know, if you're into like conventions, if you're in, into anything to do with nerd, nerd culture, geek culture, check it out. You yeah. might really like it because I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Yes, please do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so please uh, give the video a thumbs up. If you like the video, share the video out so everybody can see this. And, you know, trust me, Stephen <laughs> here, he, he was gave us some good conversation to, you know, today. So share well, it out, you. subscribe, hit that bell for notifications and, uh, Check out Surviving Supercon. Thank you guys for watching. Godspeed.